Hi, I'm Dixie and earlier this year I posted a video about how I remade an old failed costume into something new. And I'm back again with another costume fail that I mentioned in that video. My first ever Regency dress. First of all, it does not fit, so I'm not even going to try to put it on, but this dress did not turn out the way I envisioned it. I hacked to pieces the original simplicity pattern, which didn't fit right to begin with and looked goofy, into something that is technically a dress, but is kind of a weird hodgepodge of different Regency decades. The sleeve shape is early Regency, the closure is later Regency, the skirt is somewhere in the middle, and this piping was just an attempt to somehow keep the bodice together in the front. The back droops down way too low, and overall it's just a mess. And it's been sitting in my closet ever since I made it. Until now. I only have this amount of fabric to work with, I don't have any scraps left, so I thought I could work it into a 1920s day dress, and it made me try my hand at making the infamous one hour dress. When I first thought I wanted to do the one hour dress concept, I thought it was a one page tutorial published in a magazine sometime in the 20s. And then I realized it's actually like a full book of multiple variations on the same dress design. But none of these really looked like the pattern shape I'd seen people use to make a one hour dress. The thing that I had seen kind of looked more like this. And this book is a little bit different. But that's okay because I think I'm gonna have to change the way that my dress is going to be made compared to the original tutorial because I just don't have enough fabric to make it work the way these instructions call for. The book has you take just a few basic measurements including your hip, your armhole, and over your shoulder from back hip to front. Your waist doesn't matter because it's a drop waist dress, but it also doesn't ask you to take your bust measurement either which means the book is making a few body assumptions, like that your bust is smaller than your hips, which isn't the case for everyone. I took some extra measurements, like how wide I wanted the neckline to be and the length of the short sleeves. First, I had to chop off what would become the skirt portion of my new dress. Anything left I could use for the bodice. I didn't have enough length to cut the front and back bodice sections of the dress all in one like the book calls for, so I had to cut separate pieces with shoulder seams. Using my measurements, I first drafted the back piece starting at the neckline. Next I drew the shoulder slope using this bendy ruler that I conformed to my own shoulder line. I knew since my shoulders were so sloped that if I cut a dress with no shoulder slope at all like this image it would probably look droopy on me. I drew the arm opening and cut out my back piece, then used that to make the basic front piece and edited from there. One thing I did differently was to make my front piece slightly wider just because, well, if you have a bust, most of that volume is going to be in the front. More so for people with bigger busts than mine. I also cut the back armhole area a little longer than the front. This gives me a little more space which I need for my rounded upper back. Well, I sewed up the top portion and it's looking pretty good. I think I may have overestimated the shoulder slope a little bit over here because if I pull this together, you start to see these lines. That means my shoulder slope is probably too severe but that is okay. Um, I may have needed to add more room in the back hip, but that is okay too, because I need to split this down the middle to add a center panel and I can add more width in that way. And then that will hopefully add to the back. But otherwise my side seam is pretty straight, which is also good. All right, so we're getting somewhere. I knew I wanted a kind of contrast center panel on the bodice to create that over shirt, under shirt kind of look that was popular in the late 19 teens into the 20s. And the only big chunk of fabric I had left was the former bodice. 
I knew I wouldn't have a lot of fabric to work with in this project, so I wanted to make some kind of contrast collar. I bought these pre-made collar pieces online while ordering other costume supplies, and I wanted to get free shipping. It's obviously modern made, and the fabric definitely has some amount of polyester in it, but I think I could make it work for this project. I pinned the whole thing to my dress form just to try out different collar options, and I asked Instagram which version they liked best. And the winner was the higher collar. Which surprised me because I actually kind of like the other version better. Now I had to take it all apart and attach the center panel for real this time. And yes, I'm using a serger on this project mostly because it's fast and easy, but also because I have limited fabric and I need to use the smallest seam allowances possible. And sergers sew and bind at one quarter of an inch. I hemmed the sleeves by hand just because my original skirt hem was also done by hand, and I think it makes for a very clean finish. Since my skirt was basically already seamed and hemmed, I just needed to gather the waist edge. I next attached the skirt to the dress. One issue with working with an already cut and sewn skirt is my side seams on my skirt don't match the side seams on the bodice, but oh well. The collar went on last and it's just layered onto the neckline. Then the narrow seam allowances are folded under and hand sewn down. Since my neckline is more curved than the inner edges of the collar, the collar doesn't lay perfectly flat, but that's all right. When I tried it on, I noticed one side of the collar was slightly higher than the other where it meets the center panel. This is a nitpicky thing that only I would probably ever notice, but I still want to fix it. I took just a few inches of the center front apart to re-ease it back in, and it probably stretched in the first place because this fabric actually has a tiny bit of spandex in it. I finished this outfit just in time to wear to a costuming event where we took a tour at a local railroad museum. But I figured 1920s would fit right in. I'm wearing this over my 1910s chemise and corset. You obviously don't need to wear a corset for the 1920s, but I needed some way to easily hold up my stockings and my corset has garter straps. I'm also wearing my new Edwardian shoes, some cotton gloves, a vintage necklace, and a hat I didn't document because I literally made it the day before the event by unraveling a thrifted straw hat and trying to form it into a cloche style. It might be a little dark for the rest of my outfit, but hey, you gotta work with what you have. I'm so glad I was able to remake my old dress into something wearable. The 1920s can be a love it or hate it kind of fashion, it doesn't mesh well with modern beauty ideals, but if you haven't already, I urge you to give it a try. Sometimes sewing and costuming is all about getting out of your comfort zone. Let me know in the comments what you think about 1920 styles, and if you've ever refashioned an old costume. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Until next time, happy sewing!